This is Freddie News Review, the podcast. And now, America's independent voice, Rob Rob Reddy. It's time for Audrain Jackson with the answer. She is known as a big civil rights head honcho and publicist and also journalist out of Atlanta, Georgia. My good, dear friend, Audrain Jackson, what are we talking about today? We're talking about where Dr. King's dream is 50 years later, Rob. Let's do it. All right. Well, today marks the 50th anniversary of the Freedom March on Washington, where Dr. King's famous I Have a Dream speech was delivered before a multiracial, multi-ethnic crowd of thousands. It was built as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Dr. King began his speech making reference to President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation that freed slaves in the rebellious states of the Union. It stated the government will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or act to repress such persons. Mm. One hundred years after the Emancipation Proclamation, Dr. King said in his speech, the Negro is still not free. He spoke of poverty in a land of prosperity, that he and others came to Washington that day to dramatize what he termed an appalling condition. He said they came to cash a check on the promise of the architects of the Constitution, who claimed all men would be guaranteed the inalienable right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. His speech said America had defaulted on this promise for its black citizens, and he talked about the need to not hate white people, but to embrace non-blacks who understood this problem will take all of us to solve. He answered the question some posed back then, asking, when will blacks be satisfied? He said they can never be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. He wanted his children to live in a nation where they will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Dr. King talked about economics that day, Rob. He pointed out that freedom without prosperity meant very little. In other words, black folks need money. He said segregation and discrimination got us to these conditions. Some parts of his speech were prophetic, especially when he talked about freedom not representing the right to move from one smaller ghetto to a bigger one. Dr. King's dream was not about where you sit on public transportation as much of history would have you believe. His speech was not focusing simply on whether white children and black children could join hands and play together. He was calling all Americans to action and to accountability. And now in the year 2013, 150 years after the president's proclamation and 50 years after the March on Washington, we are still fighting for civil rights, voting rights, and now gender reproductive rights. Now, while segregation laws and Jim Crow has long been abolished, we are facing new challenges as well as many of the old ones. And in some ways, we face greater challenges today. Contrary to popular media and TV programming, blacks are not the only group of people with issues. The worst of our community is always on display, disproportionately promoted through repeated negative images as if all blacks carry the torch of bad behavior. For every black person that picks up a crack pipe, there's a white person somewhere doing that. So don't tell me blacks have the lockdown on bad behavior. It's just that some of our questionable behavior can be traced back to the American version of apartheid, where laws kept blacks as a permanent underclass, denying them full rights of citizenship. Now, there are some white people who claim blacks should stop pointing the finger at racism and get over it, as though we live in a post-racial world. Racism is not something black people simply talk about. It is something they live every single day. If there's a black person somewhere complaining about what a white person has done on a job, you can be sure there is a white person somewhere on a job referring to a black person as a nigger. Now, the Paula Dean case confirmed this. It's just not my imagination. It's not in my head. It is real, and it is happening today. So what does this mean in 2013? It means black people need to get back on track, figure out what our real values are. It means we must become more accountable for our actions and raise our standards from the single pursuit of self-centered materialism and having a good time in pursuing education, achievements in the workplace, and going to the polls every election to exercise. 
exercise our voting rights. Now, the dream means many white people need to come out of denial and accept the fact that waking up every day in a white skin does not grant you instant status and privilege based solely on your skin tone. A white person can change this country by simply changing their perspective, deciding today that all people they encounter should be judged solely on the content of their character and nothing else. Now, if Dr. King was around today, he wouldn't be arranging award shows to recognize celebrities. He would be in the street agitating for change. And instead of holding a march, he would likely hold those elected to office accountable to the people. He would call each of us to action. He would fight against the mentality that promotes, I got mine, so I'm not worried about if you get yours. He understood that America could not live out its true creed unless all of its people are free pursue prosperity, education, and a better life. We've heard speeches about the dream all week. We've got a lot to say, but the real question is, what are we going to do? Dr. King's speech 50 years ago was not about a black problem. Don't get it twisted. It was all about an American problem. And 50 years later, the problem is still not solved. Well said, Audrain Jackson with the answer every Wednesday right here on Reading News Review, the show. We're back tomorrow, 4 to 7. You've been listening to Reading News Review, the podcast with America's independent voice. Rob Reading, presented by Reading Communications Incorporated. For all the pressing news you need to know, log on to www.readingnewsreview.com.